someone wanted to come and was offering to speak, uh, give a lecture about, you know, how capitalism uh, was racist, but only for $50,000 an hour. And I'm thinking, like, give me a break. Chris Rufo, I, uh, can you did you see that Stanford? We, we, we the video had that Stanford law. Can, can you uh, like I think that there was DEI officer involved in that. Um, do, you, do you know the background of it? Can you talk about that? Yeah, there was a federal judge that was speaking at Stanford Law School and students came to protest. Uh, they heckled him. They tried to shut down the conversation by disrupting the speaker, which is a violation of university policy. So you've invited me to speak here and I'm being heckled nonstop. And I'm just asking for an administrator to sign the That's an administrator. But the twist on this story is that one of the DEI directors of Stanford University actually joined in with the student mob, uh, joined in in denouncing the speaker and said that this conversation was unsafe. It was making her uncomfortable. And she said that the person shouldn't really even be speaking. I have to write something down because I'm so uncomfortable up here. Um, and I don't say that for sympathy. I just say I'm deeply, deeply uncomfortable. Um, I'm uncomfortable because this event is tearing at the fabric of this community that I care about and I'm here to support. And I don't know, and I have to ask myself, and I'm not a cynic to ask this, is the juice worth the squeeze? Is this worth it? It is an aesthetic. But for many people in this law school who work here, who study here, and who live here, your advocacy, your opinions from the bench, land as absolute disenfranchisement of their rights so and does land. And it impacts directly their people, humans, their families, and their communities. And I'm uncomfortable, and it's uncomfortable to say this to you as a person. It's uncomfortable to say that for many people here, your work has caused harm. Has caused, has caused harm. And I know that must be uncomfortable to hear. I know that must be. Let me please finish. What you see is that the university itself, once it succumbs to DEI ideology, once it, once it empowers these political commissars that take over diversity, equity, and inclusion offices, um, they're absolutely hostile to open speech and debate. They're absolutely hostile to other perspectives besides left-wing orthodoxy. And I think this showed in a very dramatic way exactly what the DEI offices do. It's all about smothering debate and enforcing a political orthodoxy. Um, and the more we can do to expose it, uh, I think that the people in the middle of the country, people in the kind of rational center are going to say it's not a good use of money. It's not a good uh, a thing for university culture. And they'll want to get rid of it. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at some of the amount of money being spent across the country, I mean, you're talking about you could fund huge numbers of scholarships for students to be able to come. I mean, you want to talk about you know, uh, equity or you want to talk about some of those concepts, you know, you know maybe get, let people qualify for some, for some more financial aid. Instead, it seems like the administrative apparatus continues to grow. And, you know, part of what we've said this is that, that, that this has effectively become a scam because people are making a lot of money off this. So, Chris, can you talk about kind of the industrial complex that is uh, developed around ideas like CRT and, um, and DEI? Because I think I saw one thing. It's like someone wanted to come and was offering to speak, uh, give a lecture about, you know, how capitalism uh, was racist, but only for $50,000 an hour. And I'm thinking, like, give me a break. <laughs> the communists are always the best capitalists uh, historically, but uh, this is a real thing. I mean, uh, many universities uh, around the country, including taxpayer funded universities, have DEI bureaucracies that are spending 10, 20, 30 million. University of California, Berkeley, I believe, is spending twenty five million dollars on its DEI office. They're paying people sometimes two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, they're paying these DEI directors more than the president of the United States. Uh, and these people would otherwise be unemployable in the private sector. They don't have any skills. They don't have any hard uh, uh, skills and expertise. And so all they do is push political ideology and they're rewarded by their friends and cronies. And so it's absolutely a scam. You can see a circular use 
of taxpayer funding, both within the institution, outside contractors, paid speakers. Uh, and that's really what needs to be disrupted. The, the, the public should not be giving an, a blank check every year to left wing activists masquerading as scholars and, and university administrators. And so uh, uh, it is absolutely a money question as well as a values question that should be subjected to rigorous public debate.